ever been scared or nervous to do something, maybe you have to give a presentation at school, or maybe you have a really big test, things can come up that will make us scared. Today, we're going to hear about something that had the Israelites scared. Any guesses on what that may have been? Well, keep your guesses to yourself for now. We can see if all those guesses are correct later. But first, let's stand up to worship. Paper, scissors? I hope so, because today we're playing a game of rock, paper, scissors, but with a twist. Now for each round we play, the loser will have to face some consequences. The first consequence, for example, is a pillow full of flour. Sounds interesting, right? Well, let's hop right into our first round of rock, paper, scissors. Hey, welcome to rock, paper, scissors with a twist. And the twist is there's going to be some consequences that the loser will have to face. Todd, what's our first consequence? First consequence, right here, all-purpose flour. Makes your face nice and powdery. Just get this all ready for you guys. <laughs> right are you making a cake? <laughs> so much! All right, Mars, are you ready? No! Wait, 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 I gotta remember my moves, I almost forgot them. Oh! <laughs> the first one you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. Rock, paper, scissors, shit. That's all part of the plan. I take the least of the punishments, and then you get the worst. 
Okay, you ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's in my nose. <laughs> oh. That felt really good. <laughs> All right. Round number two. This time, Todd, what's our consequence? For our second consequence, we're gonna make it a little sweet. Some butter flavored syrup. Let's add this <laughs> to our pillow. It's, oh! Look how it combines, it's kind of cool. <laughs> I can't breathe in my nose. Or <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I talk, the shit, maple syrup or flour is gonna go into my mouth. Oh, it's <laughs> great. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Round number three. <laughs> Todd, what's, what's our punishment? We're raising the steaks challenge with some French mustard. Let's add this to our beautiful concoction of challenges. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's a All right, Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't. I gotta see what I wrote down for my next move. For those of you who don't know, Johnny pre-recorded his moves and cannot change that. Alright. Wait, wait. I gotta go he into- He keeps forgetting. I gotta go into my, my extra moves. Okay, okay. <laughs> what was it you said earlier? I'm not gonna get any of these punishments. Get ready, Mars. <laughs> I don't like this game. <laughs> I mean, it's all sticky already. <laughs> oh, I touched it! Oh. <laughs> it's, it's leaving a trail. Oh my god. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, it smells bad. <laughs> it smells so bad. <laughs> and it's, and it's all in my nostrils. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do the intro for this round. <laughs> <laughs> round number four. Todd, what do we have here? Our highest consequence challenge. Oh, 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 oh. No. oh. This is Beach Cliff Sardines. Oh. 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 Just for the camera so you guys can see. <laughs> There it is. Oh. <laughs> Truce. <laughs> this is my winning card. <laughs> my face is burning because this mustard. I don't know. Ready? What <laughs> it's going in my mouth. Wait. You look like Jack Frost. <laughs> 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 
Oh, All right, you ready, Mars? So bad. <laughs> you can't put spit on your face. <laughs> Actually, I think that came from my nose. <laughs> I think. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> you just lost every round. I lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> I found the others, but the sardines are really gross. And <laughs> I can't breathe out my nose. <laughs> Look at his nose, what's coming out of his nose? <laughs> Mustard inside my I nose. Said the syrup and the flour made of paste. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, get the sound ready. <laughs> Alright. Ready? <laughs> 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 Ready now? <laughs> go! Let <laughs> oh, go! <laughs> 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 oh, that's Johnny, that's got to stay on though. We got to keep it on the... <laughs> Thanks for playing, everyone. <laughs> I had a great time. <laughs> really? <laughs> The consequences in our game were so funny to watch. All Johnny and Marissa had to worry about was some flour and even sardines. But in real life, facing consequences can be incredibly tough. Today, we're going to hear about the Israelites in the Promised Land. But things didn't go as smoothly as they had hoped. The Israelites sent scouts to explore the land and to report back. The people did not trust God's plan, and instead, they chose not to enter the land. What do you think they faced as a consequence for their doubt and mistrust? The Israelites should have remembered that God is faithful. But what else is God like? Well, do you remember our big idea? Let's say it together. What is God like? God is holy, good, and loving. Well, let's learn more through our Bible story. Listen carefully to learn what happened to God's people. Moses and the Israelites made their way toward the promised land of Canaan. God told Moses to send men to scout out the land. So Moses chose one leader from each family tribe. He told them to see what the land was like and whether the people living there were strong or weak, many or few. So the 12 scouts went into the land and traveled around for 40 days. They cut down a cluster of grapes that was so big, it took two men to carry it on a pole. Then they went back to tell Moses and the other Israelites what they saw. The land is good. It is flowing with milk and honey, they said, but the people who live there are strong and the cities they live in are large and well protected. Then Caleb, one of the men sent to scout out the land, spoke up. We must go up and take possession of the land. We can certainly conquer it with God's help. One other scout, Joshua, agreed with Caleb. But the other scouts disagreed. We can't go up against the people. They are stronger than we are. We look like grasshoppers compared to them. The Israelites were afraid and they cried all night. They accused Moses of bringing them to Canaan to die. The people said, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Joshua and Caleb said, the land we explored is extremely good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will give it to us. Don't be afraid of the people living in the land. God is with us. While the people talked, God came down to talk to Moses. How long will these people not trust me? God asked. God threatened to destroy all the people, but Moses urged God to forgive them. Moses reminded God that he is patient, loving, and forgiving. God said, since you asked, I will forgive them, but no one who complained against me will get to see the promised land. God said the Israelites would wander in the wilderness and would not enter the promised land. 
only Joshua, Caleb, and the Israelites' children would one day enter the land. The Israelites did not trust God. They rebelled against him. Jesus trusted God perfectly. He came into the world to take the punishment we deserve for our own rebellion against God. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sins and invites us into his kingdom forever. Sometimes people have a hard time placing their trust in others. So let's test this idea using this box. What do you think is in here? All right, my hand's going in the box. Oh my gosh. I'm so nervous. It feels like sticky. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Okay, it's like, um, mm, slimy. Feels like, uh, bones. You know what it is? It's slimy. <laughs> and round. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe something edible-ish. Kind of feels like brains. Is it grapes? Oh, no, no, no. Barbecue, maybe barbecue chicken or something. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm too afraid to get any farther in. It smells clean and fresh. It's grapes and it's shaving cream. Am I done now? Is it shaving cream? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Lord, it's too That's good. It She's like, why did I do this? <laughs> okay. too good. Am I done? Yeah. Mm, mayonnaise, maybe? Is it, is, there, is it, is it uh, aioli? Not even close. Okay, well there's, um, oh wait, that's a grape. This is not bones, this is a twig. Okay, so this is, okay, so maybe it's a dessert. Maybe I'm, maybe this will be yummy. There's grapes and, and pudding maybe? Is it a pudding with grapes? And stems of, of grapes? I'm assuming if it's not whipped cream, it's probably shaving cream. Having to reach inside this box still takes a lot of trust from people. You really have to trust that someone didn't put some slimy ravioli in there for people to grab. Or even worse, what if there was a live squirrel inside? It would have been easy for people to doubt me. I mean, who wouldn't? This box seems so scary, but ultimately they still trusted they'd be fine after they reached in. And this reminds me of the Israelites in today's story. They knew God had promised them the land, and they also knew that Caleb and Joshua saw it and said it was good. But instead of trusting God, the Israelites doubted him. Let's be honest, it can be easy to distrust God when things don't make sense to us. In the same way, it can be easy to distrust the box that you have no clue what's inside. Think about some tough situations like possibly some of your friends move away. Maybe some kids at school are mean, or school could even get tough. Even our families can be hard sometimes. Each of these situations is like reaching your hand into something unknown. Even if we are scared and don't know what's gonna happen, God is still trustworthy. The Israelites chose not to trust God, and that meant they didn't get to enter the promised land for a long time. We can still see that God was faithful to the Israelites, even in their rebellion. It's easy to look at their choice and feel angry that they didn't trust God. However, in our lives, we often make sinful choices that show we don't trust God either. But God remains faithful. He sent Jesus to rescue us even though we are unfaithful to him. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sin and invites us into his kingdom forever. Even when we rebel, God loves us and continues to remain trustworthy. Go ahead and end your time in prayer. Why don't you pick a characteristic from our big idea such as holy, good, or loving? Pray thanking God for that trait. Our story can be found in Numbers chapter 13, verses 31 to 33. So be sure to read it with your family. Thanks for watching, everyone. We will see you all next week.